Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. Father, we give you praise tonight. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Honor your word in the lives of everyone tonight in the name of Jesus. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. This afternoon, the Lord spoke to me from the book of Genesis, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 6. Deuteronomy 1 and 6. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. I know God is saying it is time for a change. In somebody's life. You have dwelt long enough. And I go to church. I got a mail from Colorado Springs. That email. That, this came from Colorado Springs. And they were, the boy was healed of. The girl was healed of brain delay. Now I made a mistake. I told Pastor Kojo. Because I thought was too long story i said don't read just read this part of it then reading it there was another testimony there now without these pictures i will never remember these families but with the pictures some of you that have followed me to colorado Springs, you remember the family the boy that had the lady that they carried in uh, can't do anything can't heat by herself they said that same boy, that's the second testimony, now goes to school 10 hours a week. The same boy who's, who cannot eat, this is him, had a special chair, had a special everything. Now goes to school. They said he can read now. The sister. The devil really afflicted them. Hear me. They had exhausted every medical knowledge in the state of Colorado. And they were on their way to moving to New York because of this child. And I didn't know about them. I didn't know nothing. But the Lord said to me, as I entered that service that night, that anyone with brain issue, and they push the gate forward. That same girl, in less than one year, now is an honorable student. The one with a brain delay. So in other words, leading the class was delayed, not up to her mates, less than one year ago. Now, months after. Tonight, let me say this prophetically. And I want you to receive this. In every area of delay in your life, this month, this tonight's service, in every area. So when the Lord spoke to me in the afternoon from Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 6, you have dwelt on this mountain too long. You have been on these issues too long. Now, I got this testimony and I knew what the Lord is saying. I believe God is saying to you that you have been on that position too long. Now it's time for you to move forward. And thanksgiving praises are the instructions of the hour. As you praise God this month, every area, every portion, every spot of your life, every situation you have been in for too long, you are moving forward in the name of Jesus. I declare under the same grace 
but greater anointing tonight. This testimony, like Paul said, is the seal of my apostasy. This is one of them. I declare tonight in the name of Jesus, in every area that you have seen delay in your life, receive the speed of God in the name of Jesus. Now, that child becoming an honorable student, they said she won an award called Lynx Award. Now, that is speed. Somebody that was behind the class, not up to the class, but now ahead of the class. That is the speed that can only be done by God's power. In the name of Jesus, as you celebrate God this month, as you worship Him with praises and thanksgiving this month, you are receiving your speed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Shall God avenge the elect speedily? He says, Speedily will avenge. Luke chapter 18. This month is also your month of speed. This month is also your month of release. In every area you are being held down, I decree your release in the name of Jesus. You have cried that you are behind. Your peers have overtaken you. In the name of Jesus, I convert the delay to strength, restoration tonight in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how far every bird of the hair have gone ahead of the eagle. Because the eagle enjoy the wind, the, the, the strength of the wind. The eagle always catches up. The eagle always overtake. In the name of Jesus, this month you will overtake. This month you will overtake. This month you will overtake. In Jesus' mighty name. Except for God's power, I will never believe this boy is able to stand like I'm saying here, sitting like I'm saying here. I don't know some of you hospital people, is some of those chair or bed, like the child is always like this sleeping. That was the last time I saw this boy in December. But the boy now posed by himself to take a picture. God's power. In every area of delay in your life, whatever has been delayed is released now in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been denied is released now in the name of Jesus. As you give God the glory that is due His name, whatever is due you per time, is released in the name of Jesus. All the glory we give unto him. Let's make a joyful noise for the Lord tonight. Let's make a joyful noise. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. If you are here tonight, you may be said that if you are here tonight, things still make you doubt God's power or God's faithfulness. You are the next showcase of God's power in the name of Jesus. You are the next showcase. Whatever hands I laid on that family that day, I only laid in faith. I only laid. The first thing you feel for that family is to feel sorry that this devil is wicked. Two out of three children had brain problems. But 10 months down the road, God took over. 10 months down the road, God took over 10 months down the road. Your own won't take 10 months. 
in the name of Jesus. All the glory we give unto him. Tonight we're going to be looking into the word of the Lord. This is the month of thanksgiving. Psalm 92 from verse 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. The Bible says it is good to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing praises to your name. O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. And your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings. On the flute and on the harp with harmonious sound. So the Bible is saying it's not just to praise him. You praise him with instrument of praises. You make noise unto him. So one of the things we need to do when it comes to praising the name of the Lord. You can't just say it within you. You echo it out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't just appreciate him within you. Let some noise accompany your thanksgiving. It says, For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass and when all the workers in equity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. So there is nothing in the hands of the unbeliever that a Christian must envy. He said, it is that they may be destroyed forever. So when the unbeliever prosper, the devil set them up for everlasting destruction. That's what the Bible says. It says, you Lord are on high forever. For behold your enemies. Oh Lord, for behold your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you shall exalt like a white horse. I've been anointed with fresh oil. All this on the platform of thanksgiving. He said, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Hear me. It is a bad thing to complain against God. It is a dangerous thing to complain against God. You must grow to a point in your life that everything God does is good. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks. So it is a bad thing to complain against God. It is a bad thing to justify yourself against God. Every time you are saying, I have done my best. I have done everything that I know how to do. I have served. I have prayed. I have tied. I have done anything and nothing seems to be happening. You are justifying yourself against him. What you are saying is that you are right. God is wrong. Now, let's assume you are really right and he's wrong. What can you do? Who can punish him for you? Assuming that you are right. And is all wrong. What can you do, people of God? It is a bad thing to justify yourself against the Lord. Let me tell you something. Whatever goes wrong in anyone's life, God is not to blame. God cannot be wrong. Something is wrong with what you are doing or what you are not doing. And I believe one thing you have not been doing is praising him enough. That's why he's requesting our praises this month. All of us, we owe him thanks. Everyone. So it is a bad thing to take anything in life for granted. It is a bad thing to take anything for granted. You know, I was meditating in the afternoon. And I found out that ingratitude has trapped 
manifestations in many people's life now how because many believers have developed sense of accomplishment hear me with god there is nothing you can accomplish because the bible says without me you can do nothing so if anything gets done because it's because he did it let me say without me you can do nothing i've seen people <laughs> carry themselves you know i am a good nurse i know my job let me say without me you can do nothing unless the lord builds the house the labor in vain who builds it it's not being good alone doesn't get anything done many people are better but there's no result with it some people are good but somebody made a mistake that that took their license away from them without me sense of accomplishment when you begin to develop a sense of accomplishment you begin to share the glory with the Lord or taking the glory away from him completely. It is high. Some of the things we need to be careful for, it is good to be motivated in life, but it has to be based on God's word. All these self-motivational junks and talks is getting believers into trouble. Believe in yourself, believe in the power of your mind, believe in what you can do, believe in your ability. That's fine. But the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. Now, when you develop a sense of accomplishment, then God does not deserve your thanks because you accomplish it. Because you did it. And because you are the one doing it, then your result is limited to what you can do. And because God will not share his glory, since he's not getting any glory, he's not committed to doing anything dear. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? God only goes to places where he's going to get all the glory. God will hold it because he said, my glory will I not share. I will not negotiate that. My glory will I not share. Not a fraction of my glory will I share with you. So I am only committed if I am getting all of the glory. My glory will I not share with anyone. My glory. So but if it is your glory, do it. In gratitude, my glory will i not share everything you thank god for increases everything you thank god for multiplies my glory will i not share with anyone my glory hear me life can only become easier if you learn how to thank god for what you have The power of the Lord said something to me this afternoon. He said, Tell my people, if you get a job, not the company gave it to you, God gave it to you. If somebody blesses you, not him, it's God that blesses you through him. If somebody gives you favor, not him, it's God. Because until God speaks to the hearts of men, no man can do you good. Why? Because that's the reason why men do good sometimes and they regret doing it. Because God pushes them to do it. It's good to appreciate men for what they have done in your life, but you better give the greater glory unto the Lord. So that when God wants to do more, and that more, that man has no ability to do it, he raises another one, or he brings another one, to collide with your destiny until God speaks to the hearts of people no man can do you good yet he said my glory will I not share so he said give unto the Lord the glory due his name 
Those, these are our indebtedness of praises. We hold him praises, people of God. Thank you, Jesus. Now in Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, and forget not all its side orders, a lot of things, all a lot of things are added to you, and forget not all his benefits. Let me tell you one secret tonight. The only way to keep God doing it in your life is never to stop him for everything he has done. So there is nothing he has done that you have thanked him enough. You never can thank him enough because you don't deserve it. There are some of us here, God has done some things in our, our life 10 years ago. Oh, is, is, yes, I did it. That's not new. No. It's a glory that is due his name. It's a glory that is due his name. Glory that is due. In other words, you owe him. You are indebted to him of those places. Now it says, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destructions? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things? Psalms 28 and verse 5. Let's say, because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the oppression of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Until you reach a point in your life that the sense of achievement is destroyed, God is not committed to doing more. No wonder Paul says, <laughs> You've seen all this testimony, you've seen all those things, all those exploits of faith. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I, there was a, there was a king in the Bible, he wrote, he gave, he just gave an oration. And he said, the voice of God, not of men. The Bible said, because he did not give God the glory, worms ate him up. The Bible said, the angel of the Lord smote him. And that's his hand. And there was a rich fool. Had so much, and he said to himself, I have so much, my soul be merry. He eats plenty. The Lord said, Okay, you have control over the food, but I have control over your breath. Take your food, I take my breath out of you. I've seen privilege to see some things in my life that makes me to be afraid of God every day for the things that God has given us. I've seen things in the hands of people that humanly speaking you say this man is set. But years down the road the man's begin to beg. Everything hear me Everything you are gathering, just a blow from Satan can destroy it. Unless the Lord builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house. I know someone for a fact. Fact. That was worth millions of dollars year 2000, 2001. Millions, not 10, not 20. 
millions liquidity the only income he has today is social security everything evaporated within one year unless the law so why must you thank, why can't you thank him well I have a good job a good job is not enough to be successful in life <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying the rich fool he said okay you have everything you work for it you work for it fine but there's something you can't explain your breath take your food I'll take your breath if you're going to be eating in the dead as a dead man then we'll see it praise the Lord no wonder the Bible says in Psalm 150 and verse 6 it says let everything that has breath praise the Lord you know what the Lord said as long as you are breathing you owe him thanks let everything that the only one that is free from thanking him is the one that is not living he said let everything that has breath and let me tell you what leads to ingratitude pride pride is the foundation for ingratitude it's me i did it i i did it they were reading that testimony tears were rolling my ears, eyes because i can't even without the picture i will never have remembered nothing you just told me oh somebody you lay hands on something you said something nothing but when i saw the picture i remember the boy the boy was in that kind of chairs where you put people you pass tube and all those things into their system i need to let you know uh, our locations and our times of service in oakland we meet every thursday at 7 p.m and sundays 11 a.m the address in the Oakland is 3814 MacArthur Boulevard, Oakland, California, 94619. Don't forget our times of services in Oakland on Thursday, 7 p.m. every Thursday and every Sunday. The Dominion Celebration Service is 11 a.m. Also in San Jose, our address is 286 Bernard Avenue in San Jose. Our midweek service in San Jose is on Wednesday, 7 p.m. every Wednesday and 10 a.m. on Sundays. Also, I want to get you acquainted with our San Francisco location, which is in Daly City. We meet uh, at uh, 699 Saramonte Boulevard in Daly City. 699 Saramonte Boulevard, that's in Daly City. And on Wednesdays, it's 7 p.m. every Wednesday and on Sunday, it's 10 a.m. All these services are anointed and packed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come and experience a change. Come and be empowered to live the dominion life. The life of the, the dominion life is a reality. It is God's plan for every believer. It is possible. That is your heritage in the Lord. But you need to come and be empowered. I hope to see you in all of these services. The Lord bless you.